today's the day. If you haven't figured out what we're doing today, it will be obvious very quickly. I feel like we should explain. Neither one of us would consider ourselves like big movie buffs, but there's a special place in our hearts for the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit. <laughs> Back up like my whole life, I thought the movies were stupid. I didn't read the books. Pre-watching. I just, I thought they were dumb. I had no interest in watching. And then one night, Nate and I, we were married. It was a movie night. And he talked me into watching The Hobbit because it just came out. I thought it was really stupid. I wasn't even planning on paying attention. And then we watched all the other movies in the next couple weeks. And now I'm obsessed. And I can't believe we're at Hobbiton! While we're waiting, I'm going to read some book facts. In September 1998, Sir Peter Jackson and New Line Cinema discovered the Alexander Farm during a terrible and suitable film site. Site construction started in March 1999. You said so facts, not the entire brochure. Initially, the filming for the Hobbit trilogy began in October 2011 and only took 12 days. If you're not a Lord of the Rings fan, might as well just skip this vlog, rewatch yesterday's, or wait until tomorrow. Because it's only for the nerdy Lord of the Rings fan people. Me. Put us in that category. Welcome to the Alexander Farm. Craig Alexander runs a farming operation here. And this is where Bilbo Baggins and Gandalf rode in on their horse. <laughs> All this moss is fake. They built it out of cement and paint. They did a good job. They scaled all the different hobbit holes different sizes so that the hobbits could look really small and fit in the doors. So this is one of the big doors. Do I look like a hobbit? No, <laughs> you're, you're too far, Brett. This is one of the smaller ones. <laughs> This is a apple tree. But Peter Jackson wanted it to be a plum tree, so he plucked up all the leaves, put fake leaves on them, and fake plums, and then it was only in the movie for four seconds and the extended version. This wood may look like real pieces, but really, they're about the size of my hand. Peter Jackson hired a lady to walk back and forth every morning and evening to hang up clothes, not because he wanted the clothes, but because he wanted the natural pathways made in the grass. He had quite the offer detail. This is what it looks like inside of a hot hole. There's no house. This tree is completely fake. All of the leaves are wired on and the leaves are brought in from Taiwan and they replace them every two years. They made a pond for the movie set and then some frogs made their home in the pond, which was fine. And then the frogs were way too loud and so they had to go catch all the frogs and put them in another pond so that they could record the scene next to the pond.
We just finished our tour of Hobbiton and now we're enjoying some Hobbit drinks at the Green Dragon. Cheers. We've never done anything like a movie set tour before so we didn't really know what to expect but that seriously exceeded my expectations so much. I can't wait to go back and watch all the movies and watch for all the little secrets that we learned that happened in the filming. It was super cool. I surprisingly like I don't picture myself normally enjoying like tours where people just stand there and talk about stuff, but I love like learning all of the little details that went into like making the movies and how some of them took like days and days to plan out and then made it in the movie for like 4 seconds. It was all pretty crazy. This was a great like last finale to our camper van trip around New Zealand cuz now we're going back to Auckland. We have a two and a half hour drive and once we get to Auckland, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to have time to see anything because we have a big mission to accomplish. Find two new batteries before Everest. Because as crazy as it sounds, tomorrow morning we fly out to Nepal. Everest was one of those things that seemed like it was going to be like forever and ever away and now we leave tomorrow. <sighs> we made it to Auckland and we did some research and we're hoping that this place has some batteries. Crossing our fingers. Womp womp. Does it look darker outside since we last went into the store? <laughs> we literally just spent like two hours in the camera shop after they didn't have batteries. We called around to like five different places. Nobody in Auckland has batteries for the Canon G7X. They were so nice. We almost ended up buying a new camera. That's why we were in there for so long. <laughs> Went in for batteries, almost left with the camera. We made the right decision. We almost upgraded to the Canon G1X, but... It just wasn't really worth the upgrade, unfortunately, yeah. as much as we wanted it. So we're going to make do with the G7X on Everest if we don't find any more batteries in Kathmandu. And whenever that dies, we're gonna lug this thing up the mountain. Time to find our last campsite of the entire trip. That was sad. <laughs> well, it's almost over. Aww. We're still gonna be camping though. We are. <laughs> Two more weeks. There's complimentary cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Way harder than it looks. <laughs> 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 that was uh, done on the studio.